In this video, we're gonna take a look at seven LED lights under $50 each. the first of many LED videos I have coming up and this one we're talking about zero to fifty dollar LED lights. In part two we're going to look at lights between fifty and one hundred dollars and uh, if you check the description you'll find links to each one of these lights and just a disclaimer those links are affiliated so if you use them I will get a small commission at no extra cost to you which is important because I did not receive any of these lights for free I went to Amazon and purchased them all so um, if you guys use those links I highly appreciate that and that will help me pick up a few more and maybe just maybe we'll do a part three which will be LED lights uh, between $100 and $200. With that said, two of the lights behind me did not make the cut. The first is the Godox 64. This light is the cheapest out of all the ones I purchased at $22, and it had a pretty significant magenta shift, um, so it's not something I'm going to be including. You can fix these shifts by using gels, but I don't think it's nice to get a light and have to immediately put a gel on it permanently to fix the color. And the second light was the Micopolis 130A. Um, similar story, except it had a huge green shift, we're talking like just green, straight up green. So those two lights I will not be including as we go forward. So that knocked it down from nine to seven lights. So now let's take a look at our first LED light. This is the cheapest of the group that made it into the actual tests. And that is the best light 176. This light costs $28. And um, of all the lights, I consider this the highest quality cheap LED light uh, that I've tested. It is very bright, let me turn it on here. Um, great range, it is dimmable, and it is daylight only. So there it is at full blast, wildly bright, and I think for the money, this is one of the better options. So if you're just looking for a really bright daylight LED light that's very simple to use, this is a great option. So like I said, it is dimmable. On the back, there's actually an LCD screen here, and uh, it'll show you the ratings between, I believe, 10 and 99. So it does go down to around 10%. There we go, 10% and all the way up to 100. To turn it on and off, you just hold the button or the dial down. It's a dial button combination. And um, battery wise, we're looking at Sony F-Style batteries. So these are very popular. Pretty much every single one of the lights behind me use this battery type. So that's great news. The other thing I really like is you actually do have an external power option. So you can plug in something between 6.5 and 17 volts. So a standard 12 volt power adapter. And uh, this will be great for studio use. You could use it as a background light or a hair light, something like that, and not have to worry about batteries, which is awesome and I think a big deal when it comes to little lights like this. Out of the box, all you get is the light itself, no batteries, no power cables, and then this uh, little adapter here, which is sort of like a ball mount, but not really, it just tilts. Um, really cheap. Not really a great option, but at least they give you a metal quarter 20 thread at the bottom. Now, even though this is a great light, there are two things that are not so awesome. First of all, there is no way to check your battery level on this light. We'll see a couple lights that have that option here in a second. The other thing is there is a very, very slight yellow tint. So um, not a huge deal. You're not gonna notice it um, unless you compare it directly up against another light. So I don't consider that a massive deal breaker, again, given the cost, uh, but it's something to keep in mind if you're a real stickler for color with your LEDs. For 28 bucks, you really can't do any better. So if you're looking for a high output, dimmable daylight light, that's a great option. Next light is the Viltrox L116T. This is an interesting light. It comes in at $31, and immediately we have a bunch of features that our previous light does not have. First and foremost, this is a bi-color light. So if we turn it around here, we have an on-off switch on one side, and on the other side, we have a really nice LCD screen with a knob. Once turned on, the knob acts like a um, dimmer, so you can turn it up here. Um, I'm gonna crank it all the way up. And there we go, we're at 100%. Very soft light, which can be a good or a bad thing. And when you push the dial in, it's also a button. When you push it once, we're switching over to our color temperature. So this is a bi-color light. 
and I'm turning it down here. It's got a great range. So right now we're at 3,300 Kelvin and you can split the difference. We could go to 44, which is right there and all the way up to 5,600 Kelvin. You also notice on the LCD that we actually have a battery indicator so we can see what kind of juice we have left on the battery. Battery wise, it takes Sony MPF batteries, just like a lot of the other ones. And out of the box, you're going to receive the light itself, as well as a pretty terrible plastic, um, you know, mount here. Good news, like the other ones, is we can completely remove this and use something completely different with a metal quarter 20. Um, another thing that's really nice is we do have a power jack. So we can plug in anything that is 12 volts um, as long as there's enough current and it will power this light. This light is also very thin. It's pretty impressive, especially if I take the battery off, you can see how tiny that is. Um, it's a lightweight panel and I'm not sure exactly what kind of LED technology they're using here um, because it's so thin and because, let me go ahead and switch this over to color temperature. And if I change this, you'll probably notice the uh, output doesn't change much. So we don't really lose or gain output by changing the color temperature, which is pretty impressive. Obviously, daylight's going to look a little brighter than tungsten, but that's cool. A lot of these lights, you know, if you split them and have both color temperatures, it's going to be very bright. But if you do one or the other, you're only using half of the LEDs, so it's often uh, much more dim than mixing them or having a strictly daylight or strictly tungsten light. So I don't know exactly what's going on in there, but I'm a fan. Um, so that's really convenient that we can choose what color temperature we want to use with the light. Other nice pros to this light, it has a very high CRI of 95, which is pretty impressive. There are a couple things that uh, weren't so great. First and foremost, this is a very soft light. Because of that, often soft lights aren't very bright. So it seems very bright here because I have it right up in my face, but compared to some of the other lights, and even the one we just looked at, um, it's a little more dim. So uh, if you have a camera that doesn't do so well with low light, you might want something a little more intense. But that also goes the other way around. Soft light is beautiful, so it's nice to have that option. Something else is um, the dimming takes a long time to change. So if I switch over, here um, we're at 100% and I'm going to start as fast as I can spin it down and 50% you can tell it's taking a long time to get all the way down to 20% uh, that brings us to the next thing it only goes down to 20% so that's as low as it's going to go so you can't just barely turn it on but you can always add something to that and kind of cut down on the light one other thing um, this kind of wrecked one of my batteries which is sad. I uh, used one of my cheap knockoff Sony batteries on here and actually ripped the socket out. So um, something to keep in mind, it only happened to one type of battery and one knockoff brand. All the rest of my batteries of which I have three or four different other brands were totally fine. So probably gonna be okay, but just keep that in mind. So final thoughts on this light, this I consider the best all arounder. So if we look at all the stats, the cost, color CRI features, it has a ton of features. Um, all that stuff combined makes this the best all arounder. So if you just want a great LED light for very little, that's awesome. This is the correct choice. I would not go for this if you need harsh or a lot of light. And again, we're looking at smaller LEDs. We're not talking about big ones, which we'll get to in a different video, but um, just something to keep in mind. This is a fantastic LED. I'm really, really a big fan of this one. Our next LED light is the newer CN160. This light is $33, daylight only. Uh, we don't know what the CRI is, it's not stated anywhere. And man, is this thing bright. It's also very simple. Um, there's only two buttons or controls on the entire thing. Um, on the side here, we have a dial, which is also the on and off. So you start to turn it, it turns on, and there you go, you've got light. The other thing is on the back, there's a small button, and when you press it down, it's going to give you LED indicators letting you know what the level is on your battery. When it comes to battery, we have a couple different options. We can do Sony MPF batteries, as you see here, as well as double A's. There is, however, no power jack. And going back to the battery mount, um, this is a huge con to me. First of all, there's a little door that will cover up. You can see as you look right here, just it's exposed in there. Um, you can see all the 
points where you would put double A batteries. There's a door that covers that up, but the problem is if you have the door on, you can't get the battery in and out. Um, it won't let you pop the battery out like that. The other thing that really sucks is to put the battery in, you don't just push in and slide over like most batteries. You actually kind of have to um, angle it like so. It's kind of hard to explain, but you have to angle it really weird and then slide it over. Very difficult to um, add and remove batteries. And you can't really enclose it fully, so it looks kind of janky back here. Also, the mount is pretty terrible. It is a plastic mount and it's bolted to the bottom of the light. So you could remove it, but there's no quarter 20 there if you remove it. So you're kind of stuck with, you know, what newer gives you here, which isn't great. The other thing is there is a magenta cast. It's, it's pretty minimal, but uh, it's still there. So that's something to consider. Otherwise, it is incredibly simple. It is very bright. And at $33, it is um, a great light to consider. So that is the newer CN160. Next light is the Gigalumi, I think is how you say it, 228. There's 228 little LED chips on this light. This light comes in at $33, which I think is impressive considering what you're getting. So pros on this unit is pretty decent CRI. It's rated at 85. It's very thin if I pop the battery off here. Battery wise, again, we're looking at Sony F-style batteries. I'm gonna put it back on here. Very well made. Uh, I feel like this is going to be very durable. Operation is pretty simple. We have a light switch on the side to power it on. And then two tiny dials, and this is bi-color. There is more of a tungsten warm color. Wow, is that bright? I'll turn that all the way down. And there is the daylight equivalent. And what's interesting is the range of this light um, isn't exactly you know tungsten and daylight. They're um, a little more extreme which is actually good news for a bi-color. So for instance, this right here isn't daylight. This is, I believe, 6,000 Kelvin, which is great because that means I can turn up the warm side of the light. So that way I get to use both of the colors and still have close to daylight, which means we're getting more output. So that's good. This is a very, very bright little LED panel. Um, pretty impressive. So not only that, but on the back, You'll notice we've got uh, LED indicators for the battery level, which is awesome. And then we have a um, metal quarter 20 thread on the bottom. This light also comes with a ball mount. So it's the first of the lights that actually has a decent normal ball mount that comes with it, which is really cool. Cons on this light is there's no DC jack, so you have to power it with a battery. Next up, we have the Yang Neo YN300 Air. This is an awesome light. This light comes in at $40 and has a lot of accessories with it. We have a really nice bag they include, a handle which can be screwed to the bottom if you want to Hollywood the light, and it also comes with a really nice little tabletop stand. Uh, so it's essentially a tabletop cold shoe mount, which is really slick. This particular one is a bi-color, has a 95 plus CRI rating, which I can vouch for because this is incredibly um, good when it comes to its color rendering. So if you're really a stickler for CRI and want perfectly clean lights, these are awesome. Sony F batteries, as we've seen before. This one though is locking and almost all their lights are locking. So you can't pop the battery off without pushing down on that little button. So that's really cool. To power it up, there is a dial in the back that you press down, that turns the light on, and it is also um, the dimmer. This is also the only light in the lineup that starts at absolutely zero and goes up 1% at a time. So um, there's a couple different ways to adjust the colors and the brightness on this light. If you look at the back, there's an LCD screen with a couple buttons. We're gonna start with the color temperature button. If you press it, you're going to toggle back and forth between 5600 and 3200. Now keep in mind, if you toggle back and forth, you're not turning off the other color temperature. You're just switching to whichever one you're going to be controlling. So if I hit the button here, right now I'm on 5500 Kelvin. And if I turn it up here, boom, there is level one. And then as I turn it, it's going to increase it. Um, but what's interesting is it increases it one point at a time, which would take forever to quickly change settings on this light. So to speed that up, there's another button that says fine or coarse. Fine changes the light brightness by 1%. If I press coarse, it's going to change it by 10%. So right now I'm at 99 and 
boom, lights off. So really, really slick. I love how you can do that. So if you wanna like perfectly dial in the percentage, you can do that. Otherwise, if you're like me and you just wanna like, boom, there's light, you can do that as well. Um, we can also combine them. So I can turn up both to their maximum output. And as you can see, compared to the other lights, this is a lot more soft. And that's due to that um, milk diffuser that's built in. So that's gonna make it really nice and soft um, if you're into that. Otherwise, sorry, you're kind of stuck with it. The other thing that's really cool is we do have a battery button on the back and you'll have the letter P for power and then a number. Nine is full, one is almost dead. Moving on, we also have a power jack. So we can power this thing um, off of external power uh, without using a battery, which is really slick. Um, unfortunately, the mount is pretty terrible on this light and it is also bolted on. So recommendations for this light, I consider this the highest quality of light out of all the ones we've looked at and we're going to be looking at. So um, really good output, especially considering they're, you're losing some output by having this milk diffuser, but the, the CRI is the best that I've seen of all the lights here. Um, really like it, feature packed, so you have lots of control. Application wise, I could see this being used in two ways. One is actually a key light. Uh, you can see here, um, even though it's not a huge panel, it's gonna work well for a lot of cameras, especially some of the newer low light cameras that are available. I could also see this being a fantastic tabletop product shot light. Because you can go all the way down to 1% for each color temperature and dial all those settings in, you can do a lot of damage. And actually, um, out of the box, I just took the, the white plastic um, thing that this was sitting in in the box, used that as a bounce board, and then put this light on the little tabletop cold shoe mount it was able to get some really cool shots with just that. So literally in the box is everything you need to get great little tabletop um, product shots and light it with this light. Next up, we have the newer CN16. This might sound and look familiar to the CN160 we looked at earlier. This light is pretty much exactly the same in every single way to that other light. The only difference is it is a more dense light. So instead of 160 LED uh, bulbs, we have 216. And man, does that show. If I turn this thing on, this is crazy crazy bright. This light comes in at $41, um, so a buck more than the air that we just looked at, but the output is outrageous and outlandish. So if you want a tiny light that's crazy bright, this is a really good option for $41. Um, everything else is exactly the same. So same battery level indicator, same dial on off dimmer on the side, same super sucky battery door compartment and same terrible mount, um, but output, man. Dimmable daylight output is really, really good on this. So for recommendations, if you're just looking for stupid amounts of light in a tiny package for under 50 bucks, this is the output winner. So this is the brightest of all the other lights um, and it definitely shows, there's no question. And when I pulled this out of the box, I was just absolutely amazed with how crazy bright this is. So that is the CN216 from Newer. Last but not least, we have the Aperture Amerian M9. This is a $45 light, so this is actually the most expensive of the group, but it is the smallest and one of the most impressive when you consider what all is packed in here. So we've got an on-off switch. We have a plus and minus button. You can either tap them or hold them, and that will dim the light output. It's not gonna be as good as the others. Because of the size, this thing is just not gonna have the same output. There is a removable stand, which has a cold shoe as well as a quarter 20 built in. That's gonna allow you to you know, mount this thing somewhere. Um, it also comes with a little milk diffuser. So you can actually take that off if you want a little more output, a little more of a harsh light. Magnetically pops on. It also comes with a CTO and CTB filter or gel. To power this, uh, there is a built-in battery and you can also plug it in with a five volts micro USB cable. With that cable, you can also charge the unit. 
When the unit is on, there is a blue LED, and when it is charging, there's a red LED. Once the charge is complete, it will turn off. There is a whopping nine LEDs inside of this thing, nine chip LEDs, so that's it. It's pretty impressive. Um, CRI on this is 95 plus, so you're getting great CRI. Recommendations for this, um, compared to what else you can get for less, it's kind of expensive. But if you want the smallest possible um, light that's actually gonna do anything for you, this is a good option. I would recommend this for a hair light, rim light, even a fill or a key. Here is a shot with this light shooting through an extra layer of diffusion and I'm using it with my A6300. Granted, I had to jack the ISO up pretty high, but that's pretty impressive. So for some of these low light cameras and as these cameras get better at low light, stuff like this is going to be more useful. So that does it for part one of budget LEDs, zero to 50. Stay tuned for 50 to 100 and definitely check the links in the description to check out each one of these lights for yourself. I'd also love to hear what LEDs you would recommend that you didn't see on this list to help other filmmakers out. I can only buy so many LEDs. Um, I tried to choose from high rated ones on Amazon between four and five stars. Um, and there's a lot of other ones out there. So hopefully this has helped you out. If you have any questions at all, please drop a comment and I'll see if I can help you out. Otherwise, stay tuned for the other videos coming up here at DSLR Video Shooter. Make sure you subscribe, hit the like button if you wanna see more LED content like this, and I will see you guys in the next video.